Hello. Uh, we are going to go through the second part of section 8.1. So what we're going to do is talk about box and whisker plots today. Uh, we previously talked about histograms and dot plots. So a box and whisker plot is just another way to categorize our data. Um, so what it says here is a box and whisker plot is based off of what we call a five number summary. We're talking about the lowest value of your data called the minimum. We have our maximum value, which is the highest part. And then the median is the middle of the data. So between the minimum value and the median, we have this thing called the first quartile. And between the median and the maximum, we have something called the third quartile. So that word quartile sounds like the word quarter, which means our data is really going to be split up into four separate parts. And each of them will be ironically worth like what a quarter is, how a quarter is worth 25 cents. Each one of those quartiles is going to be 25% of your data. So it's very similar to like how a dollar would work. So Here's just an idea um, on a number line like this. Uh, none of the numbers are on there, but if you just take a look on ha uh, one of the ends, we have our minimum. The other end is our maximum. So your median goes right between those. And how you calculate the uh, first quartile is you first have to figure out what your median is, and then you take the median of between this part where my cursor is and then this part over here. So you're actually finding the middle of these two parts of the data to get you your first quartile. And then you're taking from this part right here from the median of overall data and the maximum and that would give you your third quartile. So this area right here, I'll just kind of label this, this is going to represent 25% of your data. And then this chunk right here is going to represent another, uh, oops, I'm sorry, this chunk would represent another 25 up until here. And then this would represent 25 more percent to the end of the quartile. And then the last little chunk would be your last 25%. So all together, it's gonna make up for 100% of your data. Inside this big chunk here, notice there's a 25 and a 25. So that means 50% of your data would lie in this middle portion right here. So let's take a look at just analyzing a couple of these percentages. Um, it says determine each percent of the data values for these given sections. So if we are looking at values that are less than, so I'm going to split this apart and I'll put a box in the middle here and let's pretend my median's right about here. So if this is my min and this is what we called Q1 and we put our median here and we put Q3 here and then this was our max. It says, let's talk about each of the data parts that are less than the first quartile and greater than the first quartile. So what that means is that 25% of data is um, less than Q1 and 75% of data is greater than Q1. So what we're talking about here then is just if we're talking about this little chunk right here, this represents 25% of your data, which means this whole larger part must represent 75%. If we're looking at quartile three, it kind of flips it. We're talking about this whole chunk here, less than the third quartile. So 75% of data is less than Q3. So I'm gonna write less than Q3. And that means 25% of data is greater than Q3. So if you guys have ever gotten like uh, MAP scores back or on the ACT or on any kind of standardized test score, they tell you what percentile you are in. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. These different quartiles contain a certain percentage of your data. So if you were in uh, like a higher percentile, in a box and whisker plot, you would be closer to this end of it where my cursor is. Um, two more of these. Uh, we're talking about just values less than the median or greater than the median. So if you think about it, the median means the middle. So that means 50%. Uh, ooh, that's a really ugly percent. So that means 50% of your data is less than the median. And then 50% would be greater than the median. And then the last one, we're talking about if I would have laid out, let's say my box is right here, put our median somewhere in the middle there. It's talking about this middle area between Q1 and Q3. And I kind of mentioned this really early on in this video, that this would make up for 50% of your data, which means you would have 
uh, from this lower end, this would be a low 25, and this would be an upper 25% of your data. And if we're talking about between Q1 and Q3, we are talking about that middle 50% of your data. So what we're going to do is kind of go back to that serial problem, and we're going to create a box and whisker plot. So we've already done a dot plot. We've looked at a histogram. Now we are going to make a, um, a box and whisker plot. Did I already say that? Okay, wait. We did a dot plot. We did a histogram. Now we're going to do the box and whisker. So the first thing that you guys would have to do, and I'll give you time, uh, go back in your book. You can pause the video. I want you to order these numbers from least to greatest. Um, and we were talking about the amounts of sugar in each cereal. So I'm going to write them out here first. We had one, three, four, 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 five, five, six, seven was the most occurring. That happened four times. I have eight, 10 was on there twice, 11 was on there twice, 12, 13, and 22. So I'm going to identify those five parts based off of this. Um, this one right here is going to represent my minimum. And on the other end, the 22 is going to represent my maximum. So what I want to do is calculate the median. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is put a little dot over each one of these and try to figure out what's in the middle of our data. So I take off one of the smalls. I take off one of the larges. So I'm just kind of going back and forth trying to figure out exactly um, where the middle of our data is. And if I'm going one point on each side of this, we will get to the exact center of this data. Um, which, if you notice, is going to be, since there's an even amount of data, we have two numbers left in the middle. So what you would want to do is average the two of these and realize that our median is actually right in the middle of this. So your median, since it's 7 and 7, your median itself is going to be 7. So if I want to figure out what my uh, first quartile is, we need to take a look where my cursor is over this part of the data, and we need to calculate the median of this. So I'm going to put little dots underneath, and I'm going to do the same process, where what I'm really doing is trying to figure out exactly where that middle of our data is. And notice that it's going to be between 4 and 5. So Q1 is going to be here, and the number between 4 and 5, if you add these two together and divide by 2, you would get uh, your first quartile at 4.5. So that means 25% of your data is here, 25% of your data is here, and we're going to do the same thing at the other end. I'm going to keep going back and forth here and knocking off one at each end of this so we can figure out over here, it looks like between 10 and 11 is our, uh, our upper half of this quartile. So this is going to represent Q3, and the number between 10 and 11 is 10.5. So now we're going to move on to the actual um, box and whisker plot. I'm going to label this bottom, and we're just going to label this 1 to 22. I'm trying to go fast through this. Um, so this will be the first box and whisker plot we'll be doing. OK, so I have all my values up here. We're going to start off and put a dash at our minimum. I'm going to put a dash at my maximum. And then I'm going to do the same thing at my median, which is down here at 7. So the next part of what I'm going to do is label where 4.5 is. This is where my first quartile starts, and 10.5 is where the third quartile starts. So you make a little box around this middle chunk. Again, the middle chunk represents 50% of your data. So you put a box here, and you draw the whiskers on the end of it. That is why it's called a box and whisker plot. So just to recap, what we did is ordered our numbers from least to greatest. We found the median of all of our data, and that told me this middle number where my cursor is. And then I found the media of the left-hand side, which made up for the lower 50% of our data. And that's how we calculated that Q1 was between 4 and 5. And then we found the median of the upper half of our data, which told us that that median would represent Q3, and that was between 10 and 11. So now we'll answer a couple questions about that. Uh, it says analyze uh, this box and whisker plot. So I'm not going to write down all these conclusions, but I will tell you exactly um, what's a good analyzation of this, what kind of stuff, or analyzation, what's a good analysis of this. Um, so what kind of um, data, or what kind of conclusions can we make from this data? So first of all, we know that 50% of your cereals contain seven or less grams of sugar in 50% uh, contains seven or more grams of sugar, and that was because that middle chunk represented uh, the number where the number seven occurred was our median. So 50% of your data is on either side of that. 
if you went to where that first quartile was, 25% of our data was less than that first quartile, and 75% of your data would mean that you contained um, equal to or more than four and a half grams of sugar. If we looked at where the third quartile was, that was where the 10 and a half grams were. What that means is that 75% of your data would actually be less than that amount, and 25% would be greater. So as long as you get the general concept that the median is going to be your cut between 50% of the data to the left and 50% to the right, and that we're splitting it up into four quarters, that's going to be the basis of our box and whisker plot. The last part is describe the distribution. Now, since we realize, if I go back to this, that the peak of your data was closer to the left-hand side, this is where um, if your median amount is closer to the left-hand side, you end up with this tail amount, which is pointing to the right. So the this tail is going to end up being on the other side of where the peak was, which means that this data is what we would say is skewed to the right. So your peak of seven grams was uh, to the left, and the majority of your information actually, if you look at it, your third quartile, which means going between one and 10 grams, this whole area right here, I'm gonna highlight this, this whole chunk, this is a lot going on, this whole chunk represents 75% of your data, believe it or not, this whole part right here. So only 25% of your data is over here, where if it were supposed to be symmetrical, that means that your peak would have been the middle and you would have actually had like a 50-50. But since the majority of your data, 75% of your data is on the left-hand side, we would say that the data is skewed right. So then the last one, uh, the problem going with this says that Damon states that more breakfast cereals have over 10 grams of sugar per serving than have under 5 grams of serving because he says that the whisker connecting the maximum in Q3 is longer than the whisker um, that's connecting the minimum to Q1. So both of the whiskers actually, so what he's talking about is, if I go back to this, he's saying that because this chunk right here looks like it's larger than this chunk, he's saying that more of our data must fall in this category. But he is actually wrong. If you kind of think back again, if I ask the question, what percentage of our data is in this chunk right here, hopefully you would understand 25% of our data is there because that represents that last quartile. And the same thing on the other end, 25% of your data falls over here. So actually he is wrong because both parts, even though this one looks like it's larger, they both represent 25% of your data. It is a total split of four different quarters. So each one of those quartiles then uh, would be equal.